right now, could a grand bargain be just around the corner? The president on the charm offensive trying to broker a deal on the budget with Republicans in Congress, but will it work? We'll bring you up to speed on the D.C. deficit two-step. And next, Nanny Bloomberg. A judge put the brakes on Mayor Michael Bloomberg's controversial soda ban, which was slated to go into effect tomorrow. Was his plan the epitome of a nanny state or just good government? And later, we're going to take you to the Vatican, where cardinals from around the globe have assembled as they begin the process of selecting a new pope. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman, in again tonight for Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us on this Monday evening, March the 11th. We begin with the ongoing budget battles in Washington, and when I say ongoing, I mean more like never-ending. First up, the sequester. It is still on the books and looking more and more like it's going to stay that way, even as news of sequester impacts continue to trickle in. The latest, soldiers at Texas's Fort Bliss and elsewhere learning no new applications for federal college tuition assistance will be made available. No new tuition assistance will be approved after today. Certainly this is unfortunate for soldiers that uh, are currently not taking advantage of uh, tuition assistance. First one could have uh, could be a major setback for us in losing uh, losing soldiers. And when you lose the soldiers, you lose the support people in the civilian community at the same time. But for every real world example we get that would seem to be an argument to do away with the sequester, we get lawmakers suggesting the sequester may well be here to stay. This time it's from Connecticut Senator Democrat Richard Blumenthal. On CNN this morning, he said, quote, there is a silver lining in the sequester. We're cutting spending, which we need to do. So with the sequester seemingly here to stay, at least for the time being, the focus is shifting to larger budget issues as the White House continues its push for a so-called grand bargain. It's the driving force behind the president's recent charm offensive, including dinner with Republican senators and House Budget Chairman Paul Ryan last week. They had lunch and the president's scheduled visit to the Republican caucus on Thursday. The president's outreach getting mostly high marks from lawmakers and political talkers. But will it work? Here's the rough outline of what most people think a grand bargain would look like. The GOP would have to allow billions in new revenue, either through eliminating tax loopholes or minimum tax levels like the so-called Buffett rule. New taxes, new actual taxes seem unlikely. Democrats would have to eat reforms to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. So how likely is that deal? Not very, if you listen to Paul Ryan's comments Sunday. The president has us on a path toward a debt crisis that hurts everybody, that brings us to a recession. That gives us a European kind of an experience, which we want to avoid. And it's not just Republicans sounding less than enthused about a grand bargain. Here's DNC chair, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Our friends on the other side of the aisle, unfortunately, like the senator, continue to root for our economy to not be Absolutely doing as well. Not. Absolutely the fact not. Is, is that doesn't sound like a charm offensive. And as for those possible reforms to entitlement programs, well, here's House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. If the point of it is to... Um, to take trophies. Let's raise the age. That doesn't save money. It's a trophy. It's a scalp. But it's not a solution. And, and so th that we, we wouldn't be engaged. To, uh, raising the age, I am very much against. But at least they're talking. And to talk more about the budget battles in Washington and joining us on set tonight, Michael Balboni, the founder of Redland Strategies and a former New York State Senator, Dominic Carter, you know and love him, political journalist and author, and Ryan Davis, the veteran of the Howard Dean campaign and executive director of social innovation at Blue State Digital. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. First of all, this grand bargain. If, they can, if Washington can't agree on the little things, on, on these piecemeal items, should we really be banking our hopes on a grand bargain solving all of these problems? I don't think so. I, I think that, first of all, you've had, take it from the GOP perspective. They gave in from their perspective in uh, the beginning of the year to prevent the fiscal cliff. And now, but they're getting it from a lot of their people saying, hey, whoa, 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 you increased our taxes. We're going to have, we're going to spend more money next year. And now comes up and says, well, we're going to have to do, we're going to revisit that again because of how bad the sequester was. And, but yet the run-up was so over the top from a lot of people's perspectives in terms of what the immediate impacts were going to be. And sure enough, they're going to be long-range impacts on mm -hmm. this, but, but immediately they're not. So I think probably maybe some of the GOP strategy is going to be, you know, let's, let's wait this out, but we can't appear to be not talking to anybody. We have to actually say, you know what, um, let's engage, but it, it's always the devil in the details and probably so you don't think pills. you don't think Republicans would offer or be amenable to those concessions on I, I think the uh, the billions in new tax and new revenues I think that that's going to be a very very tough thing to get to for them very tough I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with what you just said um, 
But what, what I'm stunned with, Andrew, and I think it's a great thing that the president and Republicans are meeting, but don't the president better not, and he's not leaving out his other Democrats, but we've been hearing some rumblings that, hey, you know, you're bending over backwards mm -hmm. to meet with the Republicans, but what, what about your base? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's forever walking a fine line, you know, the president. But what, what I'm concerned about, and it's just, I know this is just a small, minute detail in the grand scale of things, but Republicans say that they support our soldiers and, you know, and they do. But now, what about the soldiers that are effective tonight they can't go to college or at least get a tuition assistance ship. And colleges know one thing. It's either you have the tuition or you don't. Mm -hmm. So it's either you support the soldiers or you don't. And effective, we keep saying that, oh, there's no impact from this $85 billion cut. But effective tonight, soldiers can't go to college unless you find an alternative mean to pay for it. And that's disgusting. And I think it's really easy to, to sit around as, as talking heads on television and talk about how there's not any real real results don't, in these don't cuts. Don't tell everybody how easy it is. Come on. <laughs> no, I, I think I think that it's it's really important to remember that this is going to devastate poor people and the working class, and it and it takes away. I mean, there are people on HIV medications that won't be able to get it. This is a dumb policy uh, uh, from a public policy, a public health standpoint. I mean, this is these are really terrible cuts. They're not thoughtful cuts and they affect a lot of people who are most vulnerable already. And, and the debate on the sequester is going to continue, and we'll continue to get reports about its impact, and, and you'll hear people saying, but at least we're cutting, and that's a good thing. But really, the, I think the overarching concern, at least mine, is wh how this impacts the ongoing budget debates. And, because we need some budget harmony in Washington. We haven't been able to get anything done in Congress, because it seems like this has been one of the biggest obstacles but Andrew, so far. You know, I, I, I think all of us were raised on a tradition. You know, sometimes your grandmother tell you, you take one step forward and two backwards. That's exactly what this is. They're talking, they're cutting, but what, what about the cuts? And I couldn't agree more in terms of when you mentioned, you know, the Republicans are going to have to sell this new revenue. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to fly well because they got to go home and sell to their base. We gave in on a tax increase, as you right. said, and now this time the president wants more. So it's just not going to fly. But these cuts make absolutely no sense at all. And all Americans ultimately are going to pay for this. So, so here are two things. I just want a big 10,000 put perspective. If we're out of Iraq, we're getting out of Afghanistan, mm -hmm. the, the, the threats from a, from a military perspective are probably as low as they've been in generations. If you don't, if, if now's not the time to cut the Department of Defense, this is, I'm saying this is a Republican, when is it? Secondly, Remember who voted for this question? Wait, wait, I'm, I'm about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I know, all right, all right. Wait, 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 it's wait, wait. There's, there's no room in the budget for that. There's no room in the budget, Doc. You wait, can't wait, have wait, a heart attack. Wait, a Republican says. <laughs> No, if Cut you, the Defense Department. If you don't get there, what did your wife cook last night? Oh, well, well, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. a Republican says cut the Defense no, Department. No, no, but when, you, when you think about it, if you're obviously if you're if you're any uh, Republican or Democrat from a uh, state that relies heavily on bases, you're gonna you're gonna get this. It's gonna really impact you. But as opposed to Medicare. I mean, Medicare cuts or uh, some of the other cuts across the board that they were talking about, I think you'd hear a lot more from the constituency from that basis, Republican or Democrat. But then the other thing is this, everybody voted for this. Not everybody, but I mean, the, the, the Congress, the sequester, including the president when he was a U.S. senator. Mm -hmm. So now to come back and say, whoa, 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 wait, this is outrageous. How do we do this? Wait, wait. You put the architecture in place. We need to fix it because I, I completely agree with you. The across the board cuts was the wrong way to go. What they need to do is they need to do cuts still, but do it in a better way. And I think that's probably where the Republicans wind up, saying, you know what, You're, you, we're not going to give her the cuts, but we should do it in a different way. But no matter how you look at the sequester, in the long term, everybody's talking about cuts and, and cutting the budget one way or another or in one area or another. Is that a Republican victory overall? Because it seems like cuts are, bottom line in any deal is going to be cuts, and there is still some debate about the necessity of those cuts. So... If we're definitely looking at cuts, the, to me that feels like a Republican PR victory. If you're a Tea Party Republican, it's a tremendous victory, or you may feel it is. If you're looking at the possibility on the Republican side of a primary, it's a victory because you can go say to the base, we stood up to this popular Democratic president, demanded cuts, and we're delivering on cuts. That is until the constituents in that district feels those cuts, and then it may be a different perspective. What did you have for dinner last night? You sound very convincing with the Republican argument, so I just... Really? It, it was a little... What, what did I have last night? No, <laughs> I don't remember. 
Uh, we're going to take a quick <laughs> break while Dominic <laughs> figures out what he had for dinner and also how to solve the heart attack. When we return, we're going to bring you to the epicenter of one of the most heated political battles of the year other than the budget, guns. In the aftermath of Newtown, states and cities have had very different proposals on how to deal with the nation's gun problem. Does our nation need more guns or do we need fewer guns? That's where some of the battle lines have been drawn. That's next. Stay with us.